Now, my wife had a uh, pretty bad upbringing. You could say she could have been like a reoccurring guest on the Jerry Springer show, bring her on like once a week to tell like a different story. Um, <clears throat> now, if I go in a time machine and go back and change all that, would I? No. Like, well, why would you do that? Don't you love her? Like, don't you want her to be happy? Well, it's the fact that I love her is why I wouldn't change anything. Because her life experience made her exactly who she is today. Um, so when Jesus appeared to his disciples in the upper room, he told Thomas, put your hands in my, the nail marks in my, in my hand, and put your finger in my side. Now Jesus is the first fruits of the resurrection. So we know that when Jesus came, uh, he was in his new perfected body. He's in the type of body that we will have in our resurrection. He's able to do like all sorts of really neat, miraculous stuff, like walk through walls and fly and appear and disappear and all that sort of stuff. So, but even though he's in his new perfect body, he still has scars. I think God sees scars differently than we do. We think our scars are a sign of weakness or <clears throat> uh, they represent pain. But to God, they show part of what is complete, our perfected selves. God knit us, us together in the womb. But he didn't stop there. He didn't just walk away after we were born. He's continuing to mold us into who He wants us to be. And who He wants us to be is conformed to the image of His Son. So guess what? That often entitles scholars. That is with the scholars. So the storm didn't come upon the disciples because Jesus was asleep at the wheel. They weren't being tossed around because He doesn't care. The storm came upon them so that he could teach them to have faith. 